Once again, you glorious people smashed the like incentive on the last 10 games that can be platinumed in under 10 hours video. So I will honour that with another 10. And while we're here, speaking of incentives, if this video reaches 300 likes, then I'll start working on a part 5 straight away. It's been hit every time up until now, so let's see if we can keep this train chugging. Choo -choo, choo -choo. As always, thank you for the continued support, and a huge thank you to the current channel members of the Bomb Squad. So sit back and enjoy. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, and hopefully your next Platinum will be found here. Crow Country is an old school survivor horror set in a style very reminiscent of the original Resident Evil and Silent Hill for the PlayStation. This one was recommended to me while watching the stream of content creator Blinkoom, so of course, make sure you check his channel out for some awesome and chilled content. Despite its few annoyances, Crow Country is a game that is one of my top picks from this list and I would highly recommend to anybody that wants to bask in the genre's roots. Ammo and healing items are scattered around the theme park just enough that you don't have to be too careful with your ammo, but the fear of running out is still in the back of your mind. You'll be running around all the different sections of the theme park, solving puzzles, some that actually require some brain work, and either fighting or fleeing all sorts of undead creatures. Of course, if you are coming into Crow Country, hoping to get the Platinum as quickly as possible, then using a guide is heavily recommended, just to speed up all the puzzle progress. PSNP has the difficulty set at a 2 out of 10, requiring a single playthrough and taking only 2 hours. But, if like me, you can't run past the enemies as quickly and cleanly as it recommends you to, you can speedrun a second playthrough with the bonus item, the Crow Launcher, which makes every enemy turn to putty with ease. Rugrats Adventures in Gameland is everything you would expect from an old school Rugrats game, but with modern animations, although you will have the option if preferred to switch it back to the NES version. Playing as your favourite babies, Tommy, Chucky, Phil and Lil, you'll be going from room to room inside Tommy's house, collecting reptile coins, cookies and Tommy's infamous screwdriver, which is needed to gain access to the level's boss battle. All boss battles feature iconic enemies from the TV show, and even some of the regular enemies too. Depending on which character you choose to play as will give you little boosts to stats which will make subtle changes but all levels can be completed regardless of who you pick. On the easier difficulty you can switch between characters on the fly allowing you 4 sets of health if you actually required it and as an added bonus there are no trophies linked to difficulty. Admittingly this game should not be brought at full price, like I did. Not because it's awful, but because it's very short and ridiculously easy, even on the hardest difficulty. PSNP has it down as a 3 out of 10 and should take you no more than 3 hours to complete. Shadow Warriors 3 is a first person shooter where you as the player will control Lo Wang, the franchise's protagonist. Like its predecessors, you'll have access to a large arsenal of weapons to use against the hordes of monstrous enemies. Considered the best addition to the franchise gameplay wise, the story is not as strong as the original two games, but with Shadow Warriors being very Doom like in its core gameplay, some would say the story isn't even required in order to get your fix on all the monster executing gore. With fast paced combat that never lets up, linear levels and a campaign that can be completed in 4-5 to five hours, you'll find yourself and be encouraged to continuously be moving forward. Just be mindful that once you do go forward, you won't be able to go back, meaning further playthroughs 
will be required to grab anything that was missed. Unlike past Shadow Warrior entries, the third instalment takes pity on the Trophy Hunter community by really bringing the level of ease and time to achieve down to just a 2 out of 10 difficulty and taking an estimated 9 hours to platinum. South Park Snow Day, a game that is considered disappointing but only because of how amazing the initial two South Park games were. Snow Day certainly missed the mark by switching up the core mechanics of style and gameplay. Playing as a created character, you'll join all of South Park's favourite little bastards, such as Cartman, Coyle, Stan and Kenny, as you take part in their newest game after you, the new kid, got too strong in the previous games. Hack and slash through other LARPing kids in iconic settings from the town of South Park as you find out who is responsible for the adults turning feral and the continuous snowstorm that has put a halt to the town. As I said at the start, it's disappointing when compared to the stick of truth or fractured butthole, but snow day can still be enjoyed, especially when playing with friends. The combat is relatively basic, the soundtrack is simple and the humour doesn't quite hit the same, but the gameplay can be fun. The game is pretty short and the trophy list is pretty easy, with only one or two trophies potentially causing some frustrations. On PSNP they've got Snow Day down as a 3 out of 10 difficulty, requiring a single playthrough and taking just 8 hours. The Walking Dead Destinies, probably the most disappointing game on the list. At this point in time I think everybody has seen just how disappointing this game was on release, and to be honest, nothing has changed since. Published by Game Mill Entertainment, this became just another title in a long list of poor games that were potentially rushed out for a quick crash grab. Now obviously, my opinion is subjective, and this could be a game that you enjoy. Heck, there were moments in the game where I actually found myself enjoying it too. Following the story from the infamous television series, you'll play as a number of your favourite characters from the show and fight, sneak, or even glitch your way past hordes of brain dead zombies as you complete specific story moments. Where the game differs from the show is that in some of the big plot points, you can choose an alternative path. You'll find skill points throughout your playthrough and can upgrade any of the survivors that are still alive depending on your decisions up until that point, so keep in mind who you want to keep alive and who you are upgrading. PSNP has The Walking Dead Destinies at a 2 out of 10 difficulty, requiring a single playthrough and taking you 10 hours but this is certainly with the guide already in mind. Just as a final disclaimer, I am not telling you to play this game, just that you can get the Platinum in under 10 hours. Now we're at the halfway point, don't forget to subscribe for more Platinum content in the future. If you'd like to join the Discord and chill with other Platinum Hunters, then you can find the link down in the description below. And lastly, if any of you beautiful people would like to support the channel further, then there is the option to click that join button and become part of the Bomb Squad. Next up we have Slipstream, that was recommended to me by Gravity Rush Raven over in the Discord. If you remember the old Sega arcade racing game Outrun and fancy playing something similar on current gen consoles, then Slipstream is the one for you. With a total of 5 different vehicles to choose from and 20 different tracks to master, Slipstream is a fun yet slightly repetitive little game to sink your teeth into. Slipstream was released initially in May 2018 before its console release in April 2020 and was developed by a single person and published by Blitworks. 
the single developer certainly put a lot of love and care into the game and has succeeded in achieving his specific vision. While the gameplay does start off basic and simple, it does get more complex and addictive as the game goes on due to the variety of game modes and effects. The one negative that I can think of off the top of my head is that there is no online features which could have really propelled this banger into a more well-known status. So with an estimated difficulty of 3 out of 10, taking an average of 7 to 8 hours, this is a platinum trophy that you could add to your collection with ease. What remains of Edith Finch is a first person exploration video game developed by Giant Sparrow and published by Annapurna Interactive. The game was released in 2017 for PlayStation 4 and later for the PS5 in 2022. I have been recommended this game so many times over the past 12 months and it's always caused a discussion in my comments regarding whether What Remains of Edith Finch has a platinum or not. Simply put, the PS4 version does not have a platinum trophy, whereas the PS5 does. What Remains of Edith Finch may have very little in the way of a challenge, but it is a masterpiece in storytelling and a game that will punch your feels in their feels. Admittingly, it's not the type of game for everybody, myself included, but if you don't mind spending a couple of hours embarking on a beautiful walking simulator, then this could be an amazing experience for you. With a difficulty of 2 out of 10, requiring just a single playthrough and taking an average of 2 hours, this can be completed on a rainy afternoon, so why not set the scene and get ready to potentially cry. Shady Part of Me is a puzzle platform video game where you'll experience the cooperation between the little girl that's afraid of light and her shadow twin who helps her in a journey through a magical, little, surrealistic and beautifully drawn environment. Released back in 2020, Shady Part of Me received massive praise from critics for its beautiful use of simplish mechanics and a semi-fresh idea that had been executed amazingly. If you're into puzzle games, then I can't recommend this game enough. The music in Shady Part of Me is on a whole other level, with tracks for every level and dependent on whether you are playing the light side or the shadow side. The track being used currently for this video is just one of many examples of just how good it is. The guide states that the difficulty is a 2.5 out of 10 and should take you between 3 to 6 hours depending on how quickly you figure out the puzzles. Next up we've got Toem and this one was recommended to me by RRZ0602 in the comment section of the last video. Although I'd heard of and seen gameplay of this game I never considered checking it out for myself, but now I have, it certainly deserves its place on this list. The player assumes control over a young photographer who must ascend a mountain to witness a phenomenon known as Toem. As the player progresses, they will visit numerous Scandinavian towns and cities that are filled with NPCs that will ask for the player's help. Developed and published by Swedish independent game studio Something We Made, Toem is a game that on first inspection you wouldn't think much of, but after experiencing the story you'll see why it was received so many awards upon release. Toem is stated as a 1 out of 10 difficulty requiring a single playthrough and should take you roughly 8 hours to get that lovely platinum trophy. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion is probably in my top 3 favourite entries on this list. The game is very short and very simple, with the majority of the trophies being linked to ripping up different documents. 
This one was recommended to me by fellow content creator Defroth, who you should definitely check out at the end of this list. The player controls Turnip Boy, who has been convicted of tax evasion, and must go on a quest to stop a corrupt mayor. The game is played from a top-down perspective and fe features a variety of areas to explore. The controls are similar to a roguelike, with a basic health system and hack and slash combat. Turnip Boy has an inventory containing a variety of items which can include quest items, tools and weapons, which can be equipped one at a time. PSNP has the difficulty at a 3 out of 10, and the only reason it is that high is due to one boss being slightly annoying. That one boss aside, the rest of the game from my personal POV is that it's a 1 out of 10. You can do the whole game in a single sitting as the Platinum should only take you 4 hours. While not exactly a masterpiece, it's a funky little enjoyable experience to say the least. So what did you think of the list? How would you compare it to previous entries? If you've not seen the last 3 videos, then you're missing out on 32 games that can be platinumed in 10 hours or less. Once again, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button for a part 5. Much love and peace.